from the Honorable Mark DeWitt, Chairman and members of the Hopkins County Board of Commission in regular session at the 28th day of October 2024. The resolution of reference approval to create and hire an 80th position for the Office of Emergency Management. Whereas the Hopkins County Legislative Body created the Office of Emergency Management as the Disaster Agency directed and required by the State of Tennessee for TCA 58-2-103 and 58-2-117. Whereas the Office of Emergency Management is charged with preparation, mitigation, and recovery from the occurrence or threat thereof, whether natural, including disease outbreaks and epidemics, technological or man-made emergencies that result or may result in substantial injury or harm to the safety, welfare, or economic well-being of residents in Hopkins County, or substantial damage to or loss of property within Hopkins County. Whereas existing and continuing possibility of the occurrence of emergencies and disasters persists, in order to ensure adequate preparations, reduce vulnerability, and recover from such events, it is in the public interest for the office to be staffed full time in order to provide the necessary support and direction for Hopkins County. Therefore, be it resolved, approval will be given to hire a full time employee under the supervision of the emergency management director within the Office of Emergency Management. And therefore, be it further resolved that approval will be given for the following budget amendment to the General Fund 101. Decreased fund balance, uh, 39,000. Uh, description, undesignated fund balance, 38,638. And then it gives a breakdown of the different expenditures for the benefits and Social Security. Madam Chair, I'll so move. Okay. Commissioner Rhodes made a motion, seconded by Robbie Palm. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Is Jamie here? Uh, Jamie. I'm, I'd like to ask Jamie to come up and uh, share with us the same thing that he shared with the budget community just to give us an idea of what the program is. Uh, Punch Disaster Helene, uh, we've uh, presented the public safety and the budget. Uh, we were already taxed in their office, and then we also took on the, uh, the Post Disaster Helene workload. Uh, I'll go over that workload first since it's new. We obviously had the wind event that came through with Helene. 70% of the county was up without power. Uh, we're learning more every day. At least 600 homes were impacted that have filed for federal assistance. Uh, we coordinated all that effort through FEMA through our office. There was a disaster survivor center that was open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the mayor's office for those people that applied for that funding. But like I say, nearly 600 grants out for that funding. This presidential declaration brought on public assistance, which we've had before, and individual <coughs> assistance, which we have never had before in this county through uh, federal, the federal declared emergency. I saw the lady from the Small Business Administration. Uh, that's economic impact of those businesses that lost power for three days on the phone. What, what they can uh, have to recover. Also, there's some hazard mitigation funds that come along. Um, we brought up that contract at the beginning of this meeting, and I'd, I'd like to address that with how that flows into this. Um, emergency manager's roles has come to the spotlight during this disaster. Uh, we've not necessarily had to do it in, in this county, but other counties have had to negotiate multi-million dollar contracts in days uh, in order to get through that disaster through their emergency management office. So it's very important that, that people are trained and in position to do that when a, when a local state of emergency is declared and lives are on the line. Uh, I was currently out of town for about 10 days just prior to this event happening that we, we have no full-time coverage to step in during those times. Uh, our normal workload, we had, after the last budget, uh, past uh, we, we decreased off what we could to go back to the core uh, job of emergency management and we, I was bringing my comp time down some at that time but uh, it's uh, it's back to uh, nearly the limit at this point from what we can gather from audit. Also our, our part time uh, we're working in excess of 30 hours that they're allowed to work as part time during the initial part of the disaster. Uh, we continue to Emergency management is multi-threat. Uh, there's, uh, uh, this is, we're not just a, uh, a storm response agency. Uh, we're involved with school safety. Uh, we're the key agency for the, our basic emergency operation plan, uh, keeping that up to date, which involves all agencies in the county. We've been asked to take on uh, the radio system, which we've done, and that system continues to expand. Uh, we're asked to do a lot more than what we were uh, five years ago. Uh, we continue to have uh, industrial accidents within the county uh, that one day will require uh, the potential for evacuations if there was certain events happen and, and one of the key 
can see what's involved with that. There's also school safety that's brought up uh, numerous times and we work with our state counterparts and, and a lot of times we're the agency requesting a lot of state agencies whenever uh, whenever I was overwhelmed uh, like the event volunteer we were coordinated with some of that. Uh, we continue to have power grid issues with the uh, will of uh, 70 percent of the county was without power during this event. Luckily the temperatures were around 70 degrees and it wasn't a big uh, 70 percent of the county ends up without power for a long duration and it's 40 degrees outside much bigger deal we're responsible for the sheltering for those tall events so uh, that's that's what's got us to this point uh, by this coming in out of order we're not trying to back anyone in the corner uh, or anything like that so we already had issues that were had, uh, was going on and uh, the disaster uh, response is just added to that uh, it had to come out, out of order to do the timeline any questions okay Greg, how many assistants do you currently have so so we have two that work part-time in our office with an admin assistant and then we have randy that's on the response side but randy works many hats and emergency management so if you've seen that he's not always working under, under emergency management uh, the problem with staffing those positions uh, part-time is is their availability is not they're not always available uh, where a full-time person uh, you could have sort of an on-call schedule uh, to go along with that uh, also during the event of the disaster you also run into the personal involvement uh, those people's homes are torn down uh, those people's roofs are torn off stuff like that so uh, you always have to take that into consideration when you're running the extremely small staff as well Jamie, you mentioned you was out of town briefly prior to Hurricane Helene. Correct. What would have happened if a full-time personnel would not have been available during the disaster at the time it did? The county would do the, the, the best they could with that, but uh, uh, some of these counties that were involved in this disaster were calling in uh, teams that cost a million dollars a day. Uh, that's a large responsibility and uh, obviously you need someone trained to be able to make that call when it needs to be made and when it doesn't. Uh, so your, your fear with that, if you didn't have somebody trained, is they could pull the trigger and not need that. But uh, you want somebody trained that, that knows when to make that call. I also want to point out, you know, you did speak at the public safety committee meeting and the members that are present, you know, heard you and heard a lot of the other departments that echo your concerns. Um, there's a lot of information that goes through your office when it comes to dealing with FEMA and FEMA and from hearing from E911, EMS, Rescue Squad, Care Department. It's a lot of information that people are not do not realize what happens. And everything has to be documented because if you don't document it, it doesn't happen and you don't get any kind of funding back. Is that correct? Correct. And for the first first time in history that I know in the we have an ambulance that couldn't make it to a call. And we had to reach out for state assistance for any equipment, saw crews, anything that they could send to that, uh, which is put in through a um, MCC, which is Ministry of Coordination uh, Center. Uh, that's on an app that only my office has access to. Uh, when that's entered into, into that, when we, we hit enter, it, it hits the State Emergency Operations Center in the pit, and every representative from state government is in there, you know, we can take that request and fill it. Uh, so that's how that information comes from Hopkins County. And, uh, they literally were not taking phone calls that day because I called for that request and they said put it in MCC, which all of my offices has access to. And the last thing I'd like to you know, say to this, and I'll uh, concede the floor. I voted for it in the, bu in the budget hearings to give you another position full time. I don't feel like any department should have one full time personnel, especially in a director position. Um, for this very reason, you know, we always say if, if, and if. Well, the if came true. And if you were in a hospital or if you were out of town, then we'd had nobody fill in that position. And we had two part time personnel and one was a brand new personnel. So I think the commission needs to, this is, un, this is, nobody wants to spend a little bit more money, but I think this is time we make sure we have a position in place just in case this were to happen again. Our weather systems are changing and our, you know, our local weather definitely changed several times. A tornado in the county, 
Um, a hurricane hit the county. So I think we need to really consider adding this position just in case. Thank you. And we'll do anything within our power to protect this county and uh, protect any reimbursement or funding that we can secure for this county. Okay, any more discussion? Any questions for Jamie Wallace? Uh, Jamie, real quick. I know I've, I've asked you this before, but can you answer me again? Um, what are the chances that you could eliminate one of your part-time positions because you're adding back a full-time position? So, in a sense, in essence, your FTE is going to increase by a half, and that salary is going to be high enough that you're saying that you can hire a good quality candidate. So, could could you not get the help that you need by having you another full-time person and one part-time person in? I don't feel like we're to the point we could do that during this this budget year, and, and the reason I say that is I've got those two people trained up as much as possible to deal with what we're dealing with right now. Both have been in several of these meetings. Uh, once we get a person established, that's something during the next, next budget year that we could definitely uh, look at and see what we could come to uh, to an agreement on. Most counties this size are closest comparable is Carter, and and they have three that does the radio systems. Uh, that, that's a key part of that too. Uh, Carter's about our size. I think Eric uses them comparables a lot. They have three full time in that office and, and do pretty similar work to what we do. Okay, and just, just for the record also, this is not a maintenance of effort position. So this position, you know, although I want you to get a quality candidate, we also have to look at how much money the county's spending on a year by year basis. So th this position could be Rebudgeted once we get into the next budget cycle. I can say this: we will do everything within our power to try to get some money coming as well. Uh, and and we, we can't promise anything. We're not even really in the negotiation parts of that yet. But I think it's really showed the needs for, for these positions out in the community. And Jamie did uh, Jamie did say at the public safety meeting that um, it may have been the budget meeting. That we would, he would provide us justification and show where this employee had had a good return on investment. Correct. We, we will document that every month. Uh, and uh, we've already got plans in place now. We'll do that. How we can report that to you soon. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Jamie. Oh, sorry. Jamie? Uh-huh. Thanks, uh, Nancy. With the, all the damage that's been done by the hurricane and things like that, mm -hmm. do you anticipate or any thoughts on if there would be, due to, due to the logistics, you know, more work to do, more paperwork, more logs to get out of the creeks and things like that. Do you anticipate any assistance coming through uh, the federal government or the state or anything like that? Uh, we're pursuing that uh, from every avenue that we can. Uh, that all falls under uh, PA assistance, which is public assistance. Uh, the highway department is over our debris. Uh, and I, I think Daniel will be talking uh, over one of the next resolutions. Uh, but they're helping with that, they're documenting that, they have a plan in place. Uh, there were multiple days that went into just how we handle that debris and handling it directly at the local, state, federal level. Uh, and uh, so they're handling the debris. I know 911 will potentially be an aspect uh, in the federal <coughs> government uh, and potentially EMS as far as PA assistance. The largest loss in the county uh, was to Holston Electric. It's a multi-million dollar loss. Uh, they're also applying for public assistance uh, from that. Uh, but there is a potential. Uh, you'll see uh, things in the media about the HEAL uh, uh, program that's coming out of the governor's office. That's $100 million. Uh, but so far, there's not an avenue that we see that that's going to directly impact us positively yet. But the rules is changing on that, and the guidance is changing on that money. Uh, it's what we've been told potentially. So it's impacting, and it's a grant program, 0% uh, two years. Uh, it's got some record filing FEMA independently from you, or are they filing through you? All of it comes under the same program. Uh, 
I'll be uh, probably a read only on their application, uh, but it's all under that public assistance uh, uh, category. We compile all of our damages together uh, to get thresholds. It was no problem at all with the thresholds in the list, but uh, that, that's all one program that gets separated back out that is a, a read only state uh, online. But uh, if it was a smaller disaster and, and we were uh, close on our thresholds, we'd have to combine like coastal electrics and the highway departments together to make a final threshold that we would have to make for federal assistance. So all these applications come through your department? Correct. Uh, and, and the estimates and, and everything. Uh, this one was an expedient just because of the sheer size of the disaster. Uh, this will be the largest disaster that we're being told that's ever hit the state. Uh, as far as as far as uh, numbers. Will the position be considered permanent? Uh, no, I don't know that anything is. It's not under maintenance effort. It could all be readdressed at budget. Uh, I, I would hope we, we see the value in the position as we're, as we're going through those forms and stuff, but there's not anything that couldn't be uh, readdressed in budget as in any Do you think that would be able to hire? Uh, I, I think it I think it will affect uh, our, our ability to recruit. Uh, I can't say exactly what applications will come in, uh, but I think if we don't show a commitment to keep that consideration, <coughs> it will, uh, will affect our applications. But I would hope we'd be able to show the value of that position between now and budget time. So that might even be an issue. Will it cut out over time? I don't think it'll cut it out completely, but it'll definitely uh, definitely cut it here when we can get it uh, get it back down to a manageable rate, a manageable amount of hours. And are we going to be looking at another vehicle? Uh, no, we have a vehicle in place for this one. Uh, we have a fourth vehicle that will need to be replaced at some point, but I think we'll be able to do that through grant funding. It's just an uh, extra vehicle where if we have one down, which is our expedition. But we have a vehicle in place for this position. Didn't we buy it under the last budget? We did. For this position, that's what it was bought for. It, it, it was bought, we have four vehicles, it was bought to replace one of those, and if, if we did cre create this position, which we didn't, so it's been used as a cash vehicle for those part time. Okay, any more questions for Jane? <coughs> Any more discussion? Seeing none, cast your vote. Nine yes, three no, one abstain, one absent. Passes. Motion passes. Okay.